Hi. Like Heinrich said, uh, my name is Ben. I was in Berlin for uh, almost seven years before I moved on to London. Uh, organized a lot of the community here. I'm super happy to be here and see how, on the one hand, Android has grown. On the other hand, how the uh, Berlin community and the European community has grown to what it is today and continue thriving. Uh, today, I will give an introduction into the Android Transitions API, but it's not going to just be an introduction. We will take a uh, stroll through the first couple of things that are the basic principles, then go through a, an example, and then there will be some advanced tips on how you can use the um, Transitions API to make a more delightful app for your user. So there's a lot of content to talk, cover, so let's just jump right into it. First off, the basic principles. What is a transition? A transition kicks in whenever there's a scene change. So for example, if you switch activities or if you replace one fragment with another, but also if you want to change layouts. A transition is what happens in between that. And it basically covers one thing or a couple of things, which is uh, what has changed So um, from scene A to scene B, and then it animates these differences. So um, the core differences are being captured within a couple of methods. There's uh, capture, start, and end values to make sure that the views that are being transitioned uh, from the starting and the ending view are um, available and that they're, how they have changed. And you, you can do a couple of things there. And then there's an animator being created. And that animates the changes in between that. It's quite powerful. Um, most of you in the first place won't have to cover that and won't have to work with it, but um, it is a thing. Once you dive into the transitions to a level where you actually want to create your own, those are the methods that you uh, will have to take a look at. Um, within, of course, we, within the framework, we do have several transitions that are built in. Um, so let's take a look at what we have there. From KitKat onwards, we had a couple of transitions in there already. So change bounds, which allows you to change the size of a view and also position. So it's X and Y values as well as the width and the height. Um, you can fade views, so disappear and reappear. Um, and you have an auto transition, which is being used within the framework as well. So if you get a trans if you want work with without actually having your own custom transitions, this is what happens. So views fade in, they change the bounds, and then uh, fade out as well. Um, but from Lollipop onwards, there's even more. We added a uh, slide transition, which allows you to slide views from either side of the, view, from either, from either side of the window, as well as uh, some more advanced things like clip, clip bounds, uh, transformation, and uh, image transformation to change the bounds, bounds and transforms of those views as well. And also motion, um, because with material design, there's a lot of uh, focus on motion. We do have several ways to uh, control path motions. The most known one is the arc motion, which um, you can see here is massively exaggerated. So please do not do this. This is just for demonstration purposes so you can see what happens. So there's a uh, shared element in this case that just goes all the way back and up uh, in a curved motion. So you can see that there is something like a gravity that it works with. Um, this is called arc motion, but you also can have a pattern path motion. So you could have views that um, move in a path um, other than just the, the arc that is um, most of the time the, the right thing to use. Also, we do have propagations and epicenters, which um, allows you to um, move views in and out of scene with a start delay depending on where the view, where the screen has been touched. Um, so we have the um, explode, which is very um, powerful with that. Um, you sh which is, if it's used, uh, you should use it wisely as well, like most of the transitions, because um, yeah, you can easily confuse the users. Um, that's not, not, not what, you, what you're aiming for. So after going through the, the core APIs or core, core classes that are available there, uh, let's take a look into window transitions and what they actually are. So there's several types. So let's take a look at window content transitions. So window content transitions basically means, um, like I said before, if you change the scene from, in this case, one activity to another, um, the view fades in and slides from the bottom, um, which is straightforward. So everything within the window is uh, being, cha being transitioned. Also, you can have a shared element transition to um, take one element out of a screen and move it to another scene. And of course, you can combine the two to have a window content transition in combination with a shared element transition. So um, shared element transitions actually are somewhat magic and a little bit of sleight of hand. Um, what happens is it's not actually that the view itself gets moved to a new activity or a new scene, but what happens is um, the x and y values as well as width and height and a couple of more um, values of the 
of the, the starting view gets um, sent over to the destination, which has, in this case, a matching ID um, with different properties. So um, it has to move from this one to the other one. Um, so everything gets faded out. So the, the, all the views aside of the, the one that you're sharing gets faded out or gets transitioned in a different way. So this view gets um, faded out in the background and then gets moved to its new, uh, to its new final position. And after that is done, um, it gets replaced with the, uh, the one that is the, uh, the one within the final scene. So talking about scenes, there's a couple of things within activity transitions. Um, there is um, the exit and enter callbacks that you can set, which are the important ones. So window exit, window enter, shared element enter, shared element exit. Um, if you have already, who of you already uses transitions, by the way? Wow, that's a lot. Cool. Keep it up. Um, you might have noticed that for shared element transitions, you do have only a enter and the exit transition. So um, what happens is there's another pair of transitions. There's the return and the re-enter. And if you don't set these, what will happen is that a exit transition on the way back will become the re-enter transition. Um, so you can just, for example, in the window, if you set only a window re-enter transition, you also set a window exit transition. But you can, for bigger uh, transitions, if you want to do that, can do different uh, transitions on each and every type of that. So let's take a look at an example. Um, the example source code will, is already shared, um, at least most of it already. The um, rest of it will be shared uh, sometimes in the, in the future. Um, so let's take a look at what we're aiming for. This is an activity, this is an, an application that has um, a couple of images, a text view, and it has, on the next activity, it has some text as well to give you some more information on it. Um, and it shares the element, it has an explode transition, it has a couple of more transitions, which is pretty cool because it takes the user throughout the story, so the user knows that they click on the, on the starting view, and we take, the, we take both the image as well as the uh, author's title with us. This is what we're aiming for, um, but from default, this is what the system gives you, which is in itself quite cool, but if you add a little bit of extra effort, you can get a lot more out of it. So if you want to set up your app to do this, uh, you first of all need to go into your, into your uh, theme and add the window activity transitions uh, fl flag and set that to true. Or you inherit from theme material if you're API level 21 plus. Who, who, just, who, who of you supports 21 plus only? As I thought. So this is where app compat kicks in. Um, it inherits from theme material for API level 21 plus and for other API levels does not. So you don't have to actively care for whether it is supported or not and have to have different um, styles for, for API levels. At least not for that. Um, so let's get into the, the first thing that we want to do. So we want to share the image. In order to share the image, um, we have to set a transition name on both the source view as well as on the target view. We set the names. There are different ways to do it, but this is the best way to actually work with that. And then we start the activity, as we already did with just the regular intent. We add a couple of more things to that. So um, we just set the activity options, um, which also is available in the compat version. So if you are below 21, um, there will nothing will be happening. So the options, uh, the, the bundle that you create uh, will not uh, fail you at some point, but you have transitions and the nice things that you did for users that have these features available. For users that don't have them, um, they won't notice the difference. Um, so just instead of activity options, just go for activity options compat, and most of it has a compat version. Um, but what you do is you just say make scene transition animation. Uh, you pass it the activity, um, you pass it the starting image view as well as the name of the target view. So uh, the, yeah, the target view's transition name. Straightforward, pretty cool. Um, that's the way it works. So let's go and take a look at the next thing. So in order to explode the um, remaining items of the screen and get them back in, all we need to do is um, just say, hey, explode, that's it. Um, straightforward again. But we want to set this as the window exit transition for this activity. 
So we just set it uh, in the theme for this one activity. This can, of course, be done in code as well, so within, a, say, get window and set it on there. But for purpose of demonstration, it's done like this. Um, on the other end, we also want to take a look at what happens when you enter the activity. So we have the sliding in of the content uh, from the bottom, which is quite cool as well. It get, adds a little bit of more motion, and the user sees that there's new things coming in that they didn't already see and doesn't just fade, which is cool. Um, but we just wanted to go the extra mile. Doing this, again, is just a little bit of code that you need to, to add. Um, you just say slide uh, from the bottom, which you can omit because that's the default behavior. Um, you can s use uh, from start and top as well as the gravity is to, st uh, to slide from. Then we set an interpolator. The interpolator in this case helps us to have the content ease in. So it starts at full speed and then gets slower as it reaches its final destination. Um, you can use it without interpolators, but if you um, take a little bit of care for motion and motion design, there's a couple of really good sessions on that um, as well from Google I.O. and a couple of other um, droid cons as well, um, why this matters and how you can use them and how, which interpolators to use at which cases. Um, yeah, and then we just, like I said, you just say get window, set enter transition, and then slide. Again, pretty cool, pretty straightforward. You can encapsulate transitions within other transitions um, as well, so you can do pretty powerful things, but for getting you started and getting a couple of features already up and done is just very little code in order to get this, this started. So since we already talked a little bit about, mo about motion, um, let's take a look at what you, uh, what you can do um, to set a curve motion. So. The whole view just moved in a way while it, while expanded. It moved in this motion, in, in this curved path, so that it um, actually feels a little bit more natural again. So how we did this? Um, a transition set, which already contained the change bounds, so changing the, the size of the, uh, the view and the position, transform the clip bounds as well, and the image transform, um, we just add to the change bounds. We just add arc motion as another transition in there so that the change bounds will actually apply this motion in there. So next up is um, sharing text. So we don't just want to share the image, but since the text already is in the starting activity, we take a look at how to actually move that from the starting activity to, its tar to, to the target activity by um, growing it uh, while we do that and uh, changing the color. This is not built in, but this is custom, but um, it's also within the source code, so you can take a look at how it actually is being done. To do this, uh, we take the uh, transition set that we already had, so we um, just expand, expand on that. We add a um, target ID, which is the photo that we had in there already, and it will not, this transition set then will not be applied to any other uh, views that don't have this ID on the screen. And then we add then we add another transition set um, to just use the target ID of the, the target author ID and set this transition that we um, created before. And uh, there you go. Pretty cool, pretty awesome. Of course, there's another change bounds in there to actually make the resize possible because otherwise um, it would not do that. Next up is uh, what we did so far. We shared one element, which is pretty cool. Just say we pass in the image, we pass in the target name. Um, if you're working with more than one shared element, you need to create pairs to, um, to actually let the system know that there's more than one. So the pair is basically the same thing that was um, with the image and the target down here. Basically, you set the, um, the view that you want to use as well as the target uh, view's transition name um, for both of them or for as many as you like, um, and then replace the initial, view, uh, initial values with the new ones. Pretty cool. Pretty straightforward again. Um, let's get into a little bit more complex things. Yes, orientation changes uh, are a fun thing if you handle them correctly. Uh, when it comes to transitions, you can do um, transitions like that. So coming back from uh, the initial activity and going, uh, go, go, transitioning back from the view that you had in the first place after changing the orientation, which is a little bit more work because you actually have to think about what you share and how you share it. 
Um, in order to get this done, there's a couple of small things that you need to do. There's, of course, you have to have um, the IDs, which in this case have to be unique for each view within the hierarchy, because otherwise the system will go through the, the layout uh, hierarchy and ask, who has this ID? And the first view with that, uh, that responds within the hierarchy says, yep, that's me, and so the system tries to map that. Um, also, you have to save states during the orientation changes. Um, you have to postpone transitions. Postponing transitions is a pretty powerful concept um, that helps you to do a little bit of magic before uh, you actually do the transition. So let's take a look at how you do that. We have the source and the uh, target transition name, which are not, a, not unique per view hierarchy, but for, per view in this case. So I just went on and used data binding to set a data ID, which is the unique part to the, uh, to the, to the, transition, name, to the transition of the starting view, so that when we get back from our um, single, single um, layout on the, on the detail view, we just go back to one that has one single ID, so we know which the system knows which ones to pass. Within the target activity, so uh, we have to. Um, sorry, this is for the uh, for the starting activity. We save the state of the pictures because otherwise the pictures would be reloaded, or the system would try to recreate everything. So we we save the images, or at least the information on the images, and um, within onCreate, we just get the instance date back, so that makes it easier for the system to, or faster for the system to um, come back and recover from the orientation change. Also, before we do that, um, so before restoring the state, we postpone a transition, which basically tells the system, your transition is cool, I'm going to accept it, but not right now. If you just say postpone transition and don't do anything, of course, there is a compact version of that as well, but if you just um, stop the transition and don't continue, then you will end in somewhat of a, of a weird limbo state um, that during development can happen sometimes, and you basically have to close the app and start it again because um, the, the, the system will not recover from that correctly. Um, in order to get this, to not come into limbo, it is important to uh, make something like this. You, on the view that you want to transition on, when you, once everything has been inflated and set up, so we just uh, took the we, we put the images back in, created the adapter, and everything is on the way that it can be, can be drawn. We add it on pre-draw pre -draw listener, and within that, what we do is we first of, first of all, we remove the on pre-draw listener, because if you don't do that, this call will be executed every time the window uh, the layout manager will, wants to redraw um, something within that view. Um, and then we just say start postponed entry transition. Um, so you can do a little bit of magic within those couple of milliseconds that you uh, that you save from the, the re-inflation of everything that you want to have. Um, and that gives you a little bit more of, of a good feeling for a user as well, so you can restore the, the images and come back to them. So, but this is not just the only magic thing that you can do. You can also remap elements. So basically what happens, I introduced a view pager and um, what happens here is you slide through, the, through that. On the way back, it comes back to a different element that is even cooler because it is uh, one of the things that a lot of apps do. They have a gallery within, the, within a master activity, then they open it up to have few pages, and you slide through. To do this, uh, you first have to request the result, then update the position within the, res uh, within the response, then you have to digest that, and you have to remap the elements manually. So let's get started with that. We already know this call. We built up on that. Um, but we do a slight change in that, which basically just says, oh, we start the activity for result. So we want a response from the, uh, from the target activity. Within finish or within a place that you deem possible and necessary uh, to do that, you just say, on the way back, we just set the result. This, um, the, if the initial item is the same, I just say result OK, so that my code on the other side will get called. Um, and if the position has changed, so if the user actually um, browsed through the images or th through the items, I uh, then say, okay, this is the selected item position, I get the current item, uh, set result, okay, put the intent there so that the, uh, the starting activity can digest that. Within on activity reenter, which is one of the methods that has been introduced within API level 21, you 
do the postpone transition dance um, and do the on pre draw dance again. And then you're all set with that. And you. Doing that, so th this listener will get called once the system is uh, in a state where it actually will uh, draw. So this is not being fired immediately. So what we then do is we set the shared element exit callback. Recall earlier, re-enter and exit are the same thing. So what will happen is in that you get the chance to uh, override one of the methods, which is map shared elements. In this case, uh, what I do is I remove all the elements that are obsolete, so all the elements that are not being shared, um, and I, I remap the elements to match the, the currently selected one. So basically what I do is um, I take out the, the names, I take out the shared elements, and put in new ones. Pretty cool. So this is what you get from all that. A um, couple of lines of code. I'm quite happy with that. So this state will be shared soon. There's got to be a couple of slight reviews on that, but after that's done, uh, we'll, I'll share that to GitHub again. The uh, link is at the end of the presentation. So let's go to a couple of more things, uh, a couple of pro tips here. So let's go for window decorations. So within, uh, within Android, you can also take care of status bar and navigation bar. Um, if you just say, oh, slide the whole content in from the bottom, what will happen is that also your status bar and navigation bar will slide up all the way and down with, you, uh, with, with, the, with the content. So there's various ways to deal with this. So either you say, oh, that's fine because it's transparent and nobody will notice anyways, then just let the system take care of it. But if you actually notice this and if you slow down the transitions, which, you, which I highly recommend during development, slowing down transitions so you can feel, you can actually get the feel for things that are a little bit odd and off, um, so you will see that and you will notice that, this, that the view will slide in or out or it, within an explode just moves away and it sh sh feels a little bit odd. So what you can do is within the slide you can either just say, oh yeah, exclude the status bar background and the navigation bar background. You get those from the system directly, um, which is one of, the, one of the ways you can do that. You also can do the same thing in code. Just say exclude the targets for this transition um, so that the, the transition will not be run on those two views. Or, on the other hand, uh, you can add it to a shared element transition. So we add another couple of pairs. So to do this, we get the decor view. We uh, find status and navigation, draw, uh, navigation uh, bar backgrounds. Sometimes activities don't have, uh, sometimes devices don't have a navigation bar background because they have hardware and navigation bars. Uh, so you want to make sure that this view actually has been found because to, to make sure that your app doesn't crash or it tries, you try to do something that you that doesn't work. Um, but after that, you just create new pairs, add them to your start call, and you're good to go with that as well. So there's one more thing. I recently uh, found a question on Stack Overflow, which uh, deals with reparenting. Reparenting is pretty cool if you do it right. It's pretty easy to shoot yourself in the foot again because magic is happening there somehow. So if you want to tr move one view from, if you want to move views between layouts, what you can do is, in this case, we, we have one activity, two layouts, and uh, one view that we want to move from, from one part to the other. In order to do this, we need to make sure that the child view is not being clipped during the transition. But if you have, tra if you transition, uh, if, you, if you have ch uh, child clipping off for the entire time this screen is being shown, what will happen every time there's a layout pass, th there's it's going to be massively expensive for a system to actually make sure that everything is with it, within its bound. So straightforward again, it is um, one method that I wrote for this, which uh, just takes the scene, which is for the second layout there. Um, you add the container, you add the layout ID for that. You create the transition. You set a repair and clipping listener, which is dynamically turning on and off clipping. So at the start of the uh, transition, what we'll do is um, it turns off clipping for the view hierarchies that you're dealing with, and at the end, or canceling of the transitions, it will turn it all uh, back. So That was faster than I expected, but um, there's all the source code is um, on Google samples, android-unsplash. There's a couple of more transitions, animation samples, um, and material design samples that you definitely should take a look at. Uh, Nick Butcher's Plaid app is amazing. It's been uh, talked about today as well. Um, one of the great 
really good apps that is very powerful and um, make sure that you take a look at that as well as Topeka is um, another app that is a slightly less complicated and does the same thing as well. Also take a look at the training for transitions. Um, thank you very much and I will open the floor to all the questions that you might have. Thank you, Ben. Yes. Hey, thanks for your talk. And in the beginning, you mentioned that on the um, theme, you have to go and activate the transitions. Yes, when it comes to transitions. Do we also have to do that if I extend from the app combat theme? No, that's why I removed it. Um, AppCompat inherits from Material, at least on API 21 Plus, and the Material theme has those transitions already enabled. Okay, so I don't need to do anything there. You just need to inherit from AppCompat um, on API level 21 Plus. You will get window activity transitions uh, directly. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Who else? Yep. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Um, what about fragments? Um, yes. Is there, is there an API for fragments? Yeah, sure. Uh, so lots of the things work with fragments as well. Um, you m just have to make sure that you replace fragments because it doesn't work if you just add and remove them uh, because some of the calls don't get called. The documentation is very clear about this, so make sure that the, for all the methods you make sure to read what will happen, what will be get called. Um, not all the transitions um, callbacks will be called during um, a, a fragment transition. But if you go to the um, our street sample, that is focused on uh, making sure that transitions work for, for fragments as well. Thanks. Any more questions for Ben? This is not the case. Ben, thanks again for your inspiring talk. Thank you very much.